Okay. I thought you said that bus was going in for overhaul today. Yeah, that's what I thought too, but I see on the board it's scheduled to go in tomorrow. I just wondered. Be seeing you. Okay, Merle. I'll see ya. Miss Farley, beautiful day. <laughs> Good morning, Carolyn. Good morning, Charlie. How are you? Just fine, thank you. Good morning. Good morning. Hi, Charlie. Hi. Where are you going? Hi, Charlie. Hi, Rudy. How are things going? Not bad. Keeping yourself busy? Well, not too busy. Holy cow! How long are we going to be here, Charlie? Well, we still got a few minutes yet. Why? I forgot my lunch. I'll be right back. Morning, Charles. Mr. Ballet. Seems to me, Charles, air pollution's bad enough without your bus making it worse. Sir? Exhaust, the odor. Oh, that's going to be fixed, Mr. Ballard. The bus is going in for overhaul tomorrow. All you see anymore is smoke and haze. And I'm concerned, Charles. And this diesel bus of yours is only adding to the problem. But it doesn't when the engine is maintained properly, Mr. Ballard. I know what I'm talking about, Charles. It's obvious that diesel buses are part of the problem. And the trucks. Don't forget the trucks. Well, yeah, the big diesels with smokestacks. The smoke rises, and soon we have smog. Well, it's a problem we have to do something about. Air pollution and smog. Well, it's a problem, but there are a lot of causes of air pollution besides trucks and buses. You can see diesel exhaust smoke, though. Well, you can see all kinds of smoke. I mean, from other sources, too. But you can see black smoke every time a bus starts up, can't you? No. No, not always. And you can smell it. Does it smell good? Well, no, but... The more buses and trucks there are, the more pollution there is in the air. Uh, uh, Mr. Ballard? And the more smog you have. But what do you think causes smog? It's all the diesels. That's not 100% correct, Miss Farley. Smog is a special type of air pollution. It's formed when sunlight reacts on certain gases in the atmosphere under particular weather and geographical conditions. Just can't happen any time in any place. I believe Miss Farley was referring to air pollution, not specifically smog. Well, of course. I was talking about buses and trucks polluting the air. Well, everything that's used and exhausted pollutes the air. Some pollutants are harmful, some aren't. And some you can see and some you can't. You can certainly see diesel smoke. And what makes you think you know so much about it anyway? I've made something of a study of the subject, Miss Farley, giving it a pretty close look.
I find that polluted air is usually a complex of different elements. The smoke you see could be from burning all sorts of things, different kinds of fuel like coal or oil, or trash or burning leaves. Even your living room fireplace pollutes the air. Sometimes there's not enough wind to carry off the smoke, or the wind is held out by mountains or tall buildings. Usually the wind blows it all away. But diesel buses and trucks cause only a little teeny bit of all the air pollution. And the exhaust you do see isn't really harmful. Did you know they use diesel-powered equipment in many underground mines? That's because diesel exhaust contains practically no carbon monoxide. But Charles, what about diesel odors? I don't mind it. You like it? Well, I don't mean I enjoy it, but it doesn't annoy me either. When I smell a diesel, I don't think about exhaust. I think about power. Power to handle the daily loads of our interstate transportation industry. Most everything we own or eat or wear comes to us in diesel-powered trucks because diesel engines are more economical to run than gasoline engines. This means you benefit because the less it costs to haul something, the less you pay for it when it reaches the store. We drive billions of miles a year to bring you what you need. Diesels power a lot of other kinds of equipment, too. In the construction industry, for example, the big equipment, the scrapers, shovels, loaders, are all diesel powered. Did you know this country is spending over $75 billion on new construction each year for highways, homes, big buildings, industrial facilities? throughout the industry is toward bigger machines and increased horsepower, which means diesel engines are going to be called on to do more work than ever. They're already on duty in our nation's defense, supplying reliable power for military vehicles like this new General Sheridan weapons system. Diesel power moves billions of dollars worth of commercial and industrial goods. It moves millions and millions of people every day, and it plays a pretty important role in our country's defense. Mr. Ballard, we just can't junk all the diesels because they emit an odor. They're pretty important to all of us. Well, if diesels are so necessary, if you say we must live with them, then why haven't they done something about the smoke and smell? Well, actually, they have. Uh, perhaps it's been such a gradual thing that you haven't noticed it. We're working on it all the time. In fact, as far as smoke is concerned, we've licked it. Research is a round-the-clock, round-the-calendar program. Greater diesel efficiency is one of the major goals. Some of the engine components which were changed as a result of our research are the blower, which supplies air to the engines, 
the piston which compresses the air within the cylinder, the liner which forms the cylinder where combustion takes place, and the injector which times, meters, and injects the fuel into the cylinder where the hot compressed air burns it. These new components are now part of our latest diesel engines. With the right fuel and proper maintenance, these engines will achieve a smoke rating of practically zero. We solve the smoke problem because we know what causes smoke and we have accurate instruments for measuring it in the laboratory, such as this filtering type meter. Or this type of meter, which when probes are installed in a truck or bus, gives us a direct reading of the amount of smoke an engine emits during its operating cycle, from acceleration to deceleration. The progress made in smoke reduction since 1954 has been most significant. Actually, a smoking diesel indicates that the engine is not being cared for or operated as efficiently as possible. Odor is a different situation, primarily because the only instrument for measuring it is the human nose. And, as you know, there are all different kinds of noses with different senses of smell. So we keep improving and testing engine exhaust. We test by presenting exhaust samples to an unbiased panel of sniffers who rate them. So far, much improvement has been made in reducing diesel odor, and the work is continuing. Charles, I must say I'm impressed. Well, I'm not. I can see diesel smoke, and no one can deny it. And the thing is, you remember the diesel buses that do smoke. Actually, there aren't many of them. You don't remember the ones that don't smoke. I, actually, I guess there's no reason why you should. Diesel smoke. Period. Miss Farley, would you come up here a second? Why? Well, just a second, please. I want to show you something. Please. What is it? The back of that bus. Keep your eye on it. At the exhaust? That's right. Amazing! Do you see it? That's it. You don't see anything. What's going on? Nothing. We're just talking about air pollution. Oh. Oh, you mean those diesels? Diesels? What have diesels to do with it? I suppose you're going to say air pollution is the same as smog. Well, I, I didn't mean... They're two entirely different phenomena. Entirely different. Everything that is used and exhausted pollutes the air. Industrial smoke, burning leaves, even fireplaces. They all contribute to air pollution. Everything that burns. Anyone who believes one source causes air pollution, why, this is an extremely complex problem. Of course it is. Pollution has to be controlled, but simply to criticize it, to lay it all on one source. I did. Thank you. 